tornadoes. They're among nature's most violent spectacles, massive columns of rotating air that can tear through entire towns in a matter of minutes. When we see one forming, it almost looks like the sky itself is twisting down to the earth. But have you ever stopped to wonder how that happens? How does calm air suddenly turn into a spinning monster capable of tossing cars, uprooting trees and flattening houses? Today, we're going to slow down that chaos and explore the science, the mystery, and the sheer power behind one of nature's most fascinating phenomena, the tornado. Right here on History of Simple Things. Every tornado begins with a thunderstorm, but not just any thunderstorm. The ones that birth tornadoes are called supercells. They're rare, massive, and powerful, and they need the perfect combination of conditions to form. Imagine a recipe, warm, moist air near the ground, cold, dry air above it, and strong winds that change direction and speed with height. When these layers meet, they create instability in the atmosphere. The warm air wants to rise because it's lighter, while the cold air wants to sink because it's heavier. This constant tug of war sets the stage for an incredible vertical movement of air. Add wind shear, meaning winds blowing at different speeds and directions at different heights, and you start getting horizontal spinning tubes of air in the atmosphere. At this point, there's no tornado yet, but the rotation has already begun in the background like an engine quietly revving up. Now here's where things get interesting. Inside that developing supercell, strong updrafts of warm air start to tilt that horizontal spinning air into a vertical position. Once this vertical rotation forms, it creates what meteorologists call a mesocyclone, the heart of the storm. The mesocyclone is a massive rotating column of air that can be several kilometers wide and stretch high into the atmosphere. As the rotation tightens and strengthens, it pulls in more warm, moist air from below, feeding itself and becoming more intense. It's a self-reinforcing system, like a dancer spinning faster when they pull their arms in. So when does this swirling giant become a tornado? The transformation happens near the base of the cloud, where the cool, heavy air from the downdraft meets the warm, rising air from the updraft. This interaction creates an area of intense rotation just above the ground. If the rotation strengthens enough, it stretches downward, forming what we know as a funnel cloud. At first, this funnel might just hang there, reaching down but not quite touching the ground. But when it finally connects with the surface, when it picks up dust, debris, and dirt, that's the exact moment it officially becomes a tornado. From that point on, it's no longer just a cloud feature. It's a spinning column of destruction connecting the sky and the earth. A tornado's life can be astonishingly short or terrifyingly long. Some last mere seconds, while others can endure for over an hour, carving paths of devastation that stretch for kilometers. Once it touches down, it begins its unpredictable dance, sometimes moving in a straight line, other times weaving back and forth like a snake. Inside the funnel, Wind speeds can exceed 480 kilometers per hour in the most violent tornadoes. To put that in perspective, that's faster than the top speed of many Formula One cars. The air pressure inside the tornado drops so low that it can make buildings explode outward as the higher pressure inside them forces its way out. Despite their power, tornadoes eventually weaken. When the storm loses its source of warm, moist air, the rotation slows, the funnel thins, and it eventually dissipates back into the clouds. What's left is silence, and often, a path of heartbreak and ruin.
Meteorologists use something called the Enhanced Fujita Scale to measure tornado strength. Instead of measuring the wind directly, which is nearly impossible during the chaos, it's based on the damage left behind. The scale runs from EF0 to EF5. An EF0 might only break branches and damage roofs, while an EF5 can flatten steel-reinforced buildings and rip asphalt from the ground. These powerful twisters are rare, but when they strike, their impact can last generations. Entire towns in the United States, like Joplin, Missouri in 2011, or Moore, Oklahoma in 2013, have seen firsthand the catastrophic power of these storms. When we think of tornadoes, most people picture the flat plains of the United States, often called Tornado Alley. And it's true. That region, stretching across Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska, sees more tornadoes than anywhere else on Earth. But tornadoes aren't exclusive to America. They can form anywhere if the right conditions exist. From the open fields of Argentina to the plains of Bangladesh, and even in parts of Europe and Australia. The Philippines, too, experiences smaller versions known as whirlwinds or ipo-ipo. They're usually weaker, but they form through the same fascinating process. Tornadoes are a global reminder that the atmosphere, as beautiful as it can be, always holds the power to surprise and sometimes to frighten us. Despite decades of research, predicting the exact moment and place where a tornado will form remains one of meteorology's biggest challenges. Scientists can forecast the potential for tornadoes by analyzing wind patterns, temperature, and humidity, but pinpointing a single storm's evolution is still incredibly complex. Radar technology has improved dramatically, giving people more time to take cover than in the past, but even a few minutes can make the difference between safety and disaster. At first glance, a tornado looks like pure chaos, a violent spinning force that comes out of nowhere. But when you look closer, it's actually a delicate chain reaction, a perfect storm of physics, temperature, and motion working together in harmony, proof that even in destruction, nature follows its own kind of rhythm. And that's how a tornado forms starting from invisible air currents and growing into one of the most powerful natural forces on Earth. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.